47 years ago when I was pregnant with her, I found out that I had kidney disease. And luckily my kidneys lasted for 25 years before I got a preemptive can transplant. And that transplant lasted for 20 years, 20 and a half years actually. And last May, they start, it started deteriorating quite fast and I ended up in the hospital. I had a bowel obstruction and that was the end of my kidney. And so if, about a month later, I ended up on dialysis and I've been on dialysis since. And uh, I've had a chest catheter put in and I've had to have three in because they don't, my body doesn't like them, <laughs> keeps clotting up. So dialysis has been rough. It's, it's a lifesaver, obviously, but um, it makes me feel very weak and tired, especially the first day. And then after that, I sort of recuperate. But I can't tell you how much this transplant means to me again. It's so we started the process. We officially asked your nephrologist in December of 2021, and he figured that we could you would likely be eligible for one. So we started the process. I called at the end of January, 2022, called the Living Donor Clinic and started the conversation with them. Started testing. My very first test that I had was on February 22nd of 2022. And now the transplant's gonna take place on February 22nd, 2023. So yeah, it's been a long year. I was officially approved in September. Um, but then mom still had to have a few tests done. Yeah. I started testing in July and August, and then I think September was kind of the last test, and then in November they decided I needed to have a stress test on my heart, so that was a two-month wait, and luckily I passed that, so that was the final test last month. When I had my first transplant, there was very little testing on my part but this time they've had very thorough testing, like my heart, um, a complete physical, dental, like everything. You vaccines. Can think of. Vaccines, had vaccines, had, vaccines, like I had done. to have shingrets, uh, shingles vaccines. I've had everything up to date. So it's been very much more thorough than the last one. I'm, I'm much more prepared this time. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was very little information back then. The internet was just starting, that was in 2001. So you couldn't, it wasn't a lot of research or, and plus we lived 500 miles, 800 kilometers away from Vancouver. So there was no free appointments. It was just go down there and take a kidney. <laughs> yeah, so very this, different I'm, process. Yeah. So on the big day of testing, they did a lots of blood work. They did the a CT scan, an X-ray, um, the renal scan, um, an echo, and I can't even remember what all. <laughs> so that was last May. Um, and then after that, I had to go back. We did the cross match. We've had to do two cross matches. So one was back in May and we got the results in early June that we were a perfect match. Yeah. And then we had to do another one a week ago. And then also came back that we were a perfect match. We knew right from the start of testing that we were um, a matching for blood type, so that was one check mark that we had. But obviously, the cross match, other things can come up. Um, with the fact that mom had a transplant previously, her antibodies are quite built up, so it was honestly quite likely that we weren't going to be a match. So the fact that it was was great. Um, but we actually ended up having a couple other people too who had stepped up to say that they would donate if I couldn't. Um, in which case, if I ended up not being a match for her, I definitely still wanted to. Once they told me my kidneys were healthy, I wanted to donate one regardless, but obviously I'm grateful that it can go directly to my mom. It happens a little bit faster and easier, I think, that way. Um, but yes, I was definitely open to being in the Parrot Exchange program. And like I said, we had other people, relatives and stuff who had stepped up as well to say that, that they would also donate if needed. Yeah. Actually, um, my nephrologist said that he was quite shocked that I did not have any antibodies. You usually develop them when you have a previous transplant, but I didn't have any. So yeah, there was, I mean, a fair amount of time I had to take off work. I'm very fortunate to live in a, the big city where I can 
go have it done and not have to travel too far. Um, so very grateful for that. So I've been very blessed that working where I work that I've been um, able to take that time off to go get the testing done um, and had not have to worry financially um, or having to take vacation days, anything like that. It's been a massive help not having to worry about that. On top of everything else, having to go get the tests done and everything else, just to know you don't have to, to worry about that side of it. It's, it's been, I'm very, very grateful that, uh, that the Kidney Foundation working there and that they've allowed me that time off to go get all the testing done. When Tanya first offered the kidney, I was very apprehensive about it. But she convinced me that if I don't take her kidney, that she'll give it to somebody else. <laughs> so I couldn't resist. So I'm still nervous and anxious, but also very excited and grateful for it. I know what it means to have a kidney transplant and how wonderful it is and how much it improves your health. So I'm very thankful. It means a lot to me to be able to give my mom my kidney for a lot of reasons, obviously just to give her a better way of life. It's been really tough the last couple of years as her kidney's been failing. Um, she, her and my dad used to travel a lot and they haven't been able to do any of that. Um, I think kind of the biggest symbolic thing right now is that when she was first diagnosed with kidney disease 47 years ago, she didn't think she'd live to see me graduate and now she gets to see my daughter graduate. Yeah. So that I think is kind of a pretty special moment. My Very daughter graduates yeah. in like a month and a half, well two months. So that yeah. part's pretty amazing. So yes, I'm very grateful that I work at the Kidney Foundation and that they have a policy in place to allow me to um, take the time off to not only go to the appointments that I've gone to over the past year, but also to make sure that I'm not out any wages while I'm off for the transplant. Um, and I've been able to leave at a moment's notice if I've had um, any tests come up and also to um, have the ability to work from home while I'm isolating this week, um, the week leading up to the transplant. Um, I'm very, very grateful for that because ha had it not been like that, um, it would have been a lot more difficult and I can't imagine not having the ability to, um, you know, to have the ability to not worry financially about um, getting the test done, taking the time off that's needed for um, recovering after the transplant as well. I have really appreciated the fact that I have, know, have met so many people over the years through the kidney community, um, different kidney foundation events previous to working there. Um, and also through the transplant community. To be able to talk and bond with other kidney donors, other living donors, has just been so incredibly helpful. I know a bit more now what to expect after the fact, um, what my recovery might look like. Um, with mom already having a transplant, we know a little bit about what her recovery will look like. Um, but yeah, it's just really nice to have that community, have those peers to reach out to. Um, I, I really appreciate and am grateful to, to have that community base of people who have gone through what I'm going through. I was surprised after your last one to learn that they don't take the, her kidney out before putting mine yeah. in. That's something yeah. that seems really, a lot of people don't, don't seem to realize that part, that they would, they yeah. would keep them all. Yeah, they're putting this kidney on the opposite side of where the old one is. Yeah. They're leaving that other one in there. Yeah. That was something that was surprising. So yeah, we're very excited, grateful. Yes, and I'm very excited too. I'm at this stage of the game, not nervous one bit. I'm just really excited. I just want to get it done and, and move on with things and see mom come back to life. And <laughs> yeah, I'm just really excited. I'm not, I'm at this stage, not nervous at all. It's been quite the year. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long journey. It just seems like there's been bumps in the road, but we're very excited that we're finally here, only four days away. And we're optimistic about 
the turnout that the kidney will work well. I know Tanya's healthy, that's reassuring. It's a hard decision to take somebody's kidney. Like, I did it one other time and it was very stressful. But I know that they've, that she's been tested thoroughly and is healthy. Her kidneys are healthy and I know people can live a long time with one kidney. And so I'm not that concerned about it as, as I was last time. I just want to get in there and get it done and <laughs> see mom healthy again. And I'm not, I'm not concerned at all about any of it. I just am excited. Yeah, I think you see what the last kidney did for me. So yes, that too. Yeah. And you know how, how much that saved my life. Mm -hmm. I have joked when I felt like my mom maybe feels a bit you know, stressed about me doing this. I've joked with her that really she made me and at one point in the whole game, this kidney was already inside her when I was inside her. So all I'm really doing is giving it back to her. That's how I'm looking at it. Yeah. That makes me feel better. <laughs> Just giving it back. <laughs> to other employers who have employees who want to, who are considering becoming donors, I think other you know, companies taking part in in um, encouraging living other living donors. There's going to be, you know, some people who might hesitate doing it because of finances. And if, as an employer, they can, you know, enrich other people's lives and and help um, potential living donors to do what I'm doing and have the freedom to be able to do what I'm doing and save a life um, and improve lives, then I, I definitely encourage other employers to, to do the same. It's been a massive help to me and in my decision in doing this. The only other thing I would say is just to, that I'm really hoping by us talking about it and, and sharing our story that it's not you know, I don't want to come across as though we're bragging or wanting the attention, anything like that. I more so just want to really encourage other people to consider being living donors. Um, through this process and through other Kidney Foundation events, I've met a lot of um, people who have donated kidneys um, without even knowing who's getting them, and I think that that's also amazing. Um, there's so many stories of, you know, just living donors making such a difference in people's lives and I that's probably a big part of this for me as I really just am trying to wanting to normalize the whole process and I strongly encourage other people to consider being living donors. How many more sleeps? <laughs> Four! It's hard to Spoiled believe. Me. This me. time next week it'll yeah. be Hopefully I, out of bed I joked with her, I'm like, yesterday, I said, this time next week you'll be peeing up a storm with your new yeah. kidney.